So Shotcut now has an official motion tracking filter that makes tracking things much more easier. Now you have to make sure that you have the latest updated version, which is version 23.5.14. And one thing to clarify is that this new motion tracking filter is just an analyzing tool that uses algorithms to make keyframes that can be shared with other filters in Shotcut to utilize the motion tracking data. And this is a list of the supporting filters that you can use to motion track. Now I'll be demonstrating how to track an image to a subject or object using the SPR filter. To do this, just select the main clip in your video track and then open a second track above that. Then place the image you want to use and adjust the length to match your original clip. Now I'm going to disable my second video track to remove the overlay image. And then from there, select your main video clip and then go to filters and search for the motion tracker filter. Once it's on, you'll see this tracking point that looks like a box in a little green outline. Now you can enable or disable this green outline by going to the settings and checking the show preview box, which you will have to do when you're done and you're ready ready to export. But leave it on for now because this tracking point is what's going to analyze our subject. And you can adjust the size and position of this box and place it on the subject or object you're trying to track. Now let's go back and go through all of these settings. So first we have our preset menu and this will allow us to save our motion tracking data for any future use. Then we have this naming section, which is really important because it will help us identify our most recent tracking data to use with the other filters. Now it won't save the name once we close Shotcut. That's why saving it as a preset is really important. Then we have this size and position settings which informs us where the tracking point is placed in our video and all of these settings have this reset button just in case you mess up underneath that we have our algorithm selection now shotcut captures the motion tracking data by using algorithms now if you ask me what's the difference between these algorithms i don't know what to tell you because i have researched and looked around and i couldn't find a definite answer for this so if you know anything about these algorithms feel free to comment down below and i'll make sure to pin your comment but these algorithms are different options to use just in case if one doesn't work quite as well. You can always pick a different one and analyze it again and it will rewrite all the data so it's pretty simple to do. Then we have our show preview option, which we can enable or disable with the color of the outline, like I mentioned before. And finally, we have the analyze button, which will start the tracking process. And since we picked our desired algorithm and placed the tracking point where we want it in our preview screen, we can go ahead and click on analyze. You can see that the jobs window will appear and start processing, which shouldn't take that long. Once it's done analyzing it, we can hit play and you can see how our tracking outline follows our subject or object. And you can explore the different algorithms to see which one does best. After that, we can name our tracking data and create a preset to use in the future, if it's ever needed. Just hit the plus button in the preset section and just name it and save it. Before I show you how to use this tracking data, I wanna to talk to you about how I found my sound effects and music tracks for this video, courtesy of Artlist. So you can think about Artlist as a one-stop shop for all your video creating needs. Artlist has an amazing library of sound effects and music that you guys can use for your own videos. And they carry everything and it makes it so easy to find the exact sound effects or music track that you're looking for for your videos. Now they have a ton of subscriptions that you can choose from. Some of them covers all social media content like YouTube and others have commercial license which you can use for client projects as well. They also have this Artlist Max bundle which basically gives you access to their whole inventory. I'm talking about video editing software, photo editing software, as well as access to templates and stock footage that you guys can use for your own. So if you want to try them out, feel free to use the link in the description to get an additional two months or just sign up for free. But other than that, thank you so much. Now that we saved it into our preset, we can go back down to our timeline. And then we can enable this second video track to see the overlay image. From there, we're gonna select the image clip itself and add the SPR filter. Once that's added, we can go ahead and adjust the size and position of the image. And okay, this is one of the most important parts of the process. Once everything is set and done, we'll go back to the SPR settings and you will have this button option to load in the keyframes from the motion tracker. When you select that, a new pop-up should appear with certain and options. All you have to do is go to the motion tracker menu and select the most recent tracking data that we have made and it should have the same name that we saved it to. From there it will give you a drop down menu to adjust where we're tracking the image to. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory but I'm going to choose absolute position for the best accuracy and you can choose whichever is best for you. Next up is the timing in which you want the tracking to start. Now you have two options here. We can apply the keyframe from the start of the video all the way through the end or start it at the current position of the playhead. So I'm going to choose from the start. 
Then finally, we have our apply, reset, and cancel buttons, which is pretty obvious what they do. Just select apply and wait until the process is done. And this keyframe icon in the SPR filter should be highlighted, indicating that the process is done. Now, if you want to see all the keyframes that went into tracking your image, you can simply make sure that the image clip is selected and go down here to the keyframes timeline. And all of these tracker points are the actual keyframes made. Now, if you feel like you messed up or want to choose a different adjustment, you can clear all these keyframes by simply going back to the keyframes icon and clicking on it. And all the keyframes should be cleared. Other than that, it's ready to be viewed. As you can see, the image has been tracked to my hand and is following our tracking outline perfectly. Now, I encourage you to explore the rest of the adjustments as well as the rest of the settings to find what best works for you. Now for the last thing, let's go back to the motion tracker filter and disable the preview box and it should turn off the green outline in our video. Otherwise, it would have been exported along with our video, which we don't want. Anyways, you're set to go and you can export it as normal. Now, one thing to consider is that this is the first version of the motion tracking filter and I can guarantee you that plenty of updates are coming around to make this tracking filter even better. So if you want to compare this new filter to the previous ways that you can motion track, I've linked that video down for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.